Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a really cool video tutorial going over the new wrap feature for Power Apps. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this feature is, it just hit general availability this June uh, and it allows you to create native mobile apps with Power Apps. One of the reasons this is really cool is that it allows you to package together multiple Canvas apps in the same app. Uh, another one is that you can manage these apps with Microsoft Intune. So it's gonna be much more accessible as you can just put these apps on end users devices instead of having them go through the Power Apps app uh, and search for whatever app that you shared with them. Another big one is that it allows you to code sign for both iOS and Android. Please note that if you are deploying to iOS, you will need an Apple developer account. This feature also requires you to have some general understanding of Azure Active Directory app registrations, uh, Visual Studio App Center, uh, as well as Power Platform solutions. So take that into account, but with that, let's get into the video. So before we start building anything, I do want to cover the documentation quick. Uh, Microsoft has gone ahead and made some really good documentation pertaining to this feature. Um, they have a really nice overview document kind of showing you the overall process. Um, as well as the current capabilities with RAP in its current state. Um, they have a more in-depth instructional document and then some documentation pertaining to code signing for both iOS and Android. Uh, do note in the video, we're gonna be covering the iOS route. But from what I can tell right now, utilizing this feature for both platforms is pretty much the same. There's just a couple of nuances on either end. So to start this process off first, we're gonna to need to install the RAP solution into our environment as it's not installed by default. And this is gonna require you to have admin level privileges over your environment. So first we're going to want to go up to the right under settings and click admin center. Once this loads, we're going to want to go to the left side and click resources and then click dynamics 365 apps. And over in the right side, we're going to want to type in wrap and you see wrap for power app shows up and you'll click that and then click install. Uh, and this is where you'll pick your environment. Like I said, I'm in the default environment, so we're going to click that. So then you're just going to agree to the terms of service and then click install. This should take a few minutes, uh, but shouldn't take too long. All right, so we can see now that wrap has been installed. Uh, in my case, it just updated since mine was previously installed, but it'll look the same. So if we go back to Power Apps and we go into Solutions, uh, now you should see Mobile App Solution Anchor as well as Mobile App Solution. So now that we have wrap installed in our environment, uh, the next step is to get our apps in a solution. In my case, I don't have apps yet and I don't have a solution, but if you have existing apps, you can just create a new solution and add them to that. Uh, so for our video, I'm gonna go New Solution and we're just gonna call this Wrap Test. Uh, publisher is just going to be default and then we'll click create. So now that our solution has been created uh, from here you could either add an existing app. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple new apps so we can demonstrate the multiple canvas app feature uh, and I'll be right back to explain that. All right, so I've went ahead and created a couple of Canvas apps for this uh, test project. I created the landing page app, which will be the kind of home app that the wrap project will boot up to, and then the submit form app. So these are entirely different apps. Um, so if we take a look at the landing page app, all it is is just one screen with a button, um, and this is what will open up the other app. So all the button does is uses the launch function, and then the web link um, of the other app. So in order to get the web link, uh, you click on the app you're looking for, click details, and then you can copy it right from there. So if we take a look at the submit form app, all this is is a very simple Canvas app that uh, sends these three uh, text fields to SharePoint. Uh, and on its back button, it launches the web link of the landing page app. So uh, hopefully when we load this up, this will work smooth. Um, and that is kind of how the linking between screens works in wrap. All right, so now it's time to take a look at Wrap itself. Uh, if you're using just one app, you just click on the app you want to uh, wrap up. If you're using multiple apps, uh, you'd want to pick the app that you're using to link them all together. In my case, it's this landing page app, so I'm going to click that. Uh, and up here, now that we installed Wrap to this environment, we can see this little Wrap option, and we're going to go ahead and click that. And we can see now Wrap has opened up. I'm going to close all these so we can kind of walk through each one quickly. All right, so if we click on General, we can see the information that it wants for that. Uh, we can see it wants a display name. By default, it's going to take the name of the app. Um, in our case, we want to change this to Wrap Demo. Um, and then from here, you can click on any secondary apps you want to add. So we want to add Submit Form app. So we're going to click that and then click off of it. Next, it's gonna want your build platform, uh, iOS or Android. A cool thing about this is that it will allow you to build for both at the same time. So, and here's one of the differences I was talking about earlier. Uh, you can see that Android is going to have an extra field required here, and that's gonna be the Active Directory uh, Client Redirect URI. Um, this is something for the iOS side of things that it's just gonna utilize the bundle ID. Um, but for Android, the extra step is that you have to generate a signature hash from Android Studio um, and put that at the end of this. So again, not a big difference between building for the two platforms, but certainly something to keep in mind while you're going about this. 
But for this build, we're just doing iOS, so it's gonna want just the bundle ID and an Active Directory client ID, which we're gonna show you how to do in a minute. So moving on, we're gonna to go to the next part, which is display options. And we can see at the top that it's gonna want you to upload some kind of custom um, iOS app icon. Uh, the next thing it's gonna want is a splash screen. Uh, so when you boot up the app, the splash screen is gonna show until you get to the welcome screen. Um, and the point of these two screens is that you still have to authenticate, so you're still gonna to have to sign in um, with your account. Um, but yeah, it lets you have a little extra customization into that, uh, which is cool. So this I think would be a great place to put like a company logo, something like that. And then the background uh, and the sign in button color for that down here, as well as the status bar theme of the text. So that's pretty much the display options section. Kind of cool that they added all this customization in here. So under publishing settings, this is something we're going to grab from uh, Visual Studio App Center. Uh, and I will again show you how to do that next. And the last part is builds, and we don't have any builds yet, but this is where you can kind of view and manage your builds um, as you push them to Visual Studio App Center. All right, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and save what we've started on Wrap, uh, just so we don't lose anything. I believe we just changed the name and added our apps and selected our platform. Uh, now it's time to start populating some of this information, uh, and we're actually gonna start with the App Center information, so the App Center URL, uh, as well as the App Center API token. Uh, and for that, we're gonna need to go to um, Visual Studio App Center. To get there, we're gonna open up a new tab, and I have it bookmarked, but I'll have the link in the description below. You'll just sign in, create a new organization. Uh, mine is Power Apps University. And I have one app in there now, which is a previous test. Now we're going to build our container that our app is going to live in. So we're going to click add new app on the right. Uh, and this will pop up this window. First, it's going to want a name. We're just going to call this uh, wrap demo app um, for lack of a better name. Uh, release type is going to be optional, but that's alpha, beta, enterprise, production, stuff we don't need to worry about now. And this is where it's important to note that if you're doing a project that's just iOS, uh, instead of clicking iOS, you're going to click custom. Um, if you're doing an Android project, you're going to click Android and then React Native. If you're doing a wrap project that's both Android and iOS, you're going to actually need to create two separate containers. So you're going to need to create one app that's um, custom for iOS and then a second one that's Android React Native um, for your Android build. Just another thing to keep in mind for this process, but again, we're doing iOS, so we're going to click custom um, and looks all good. So we're going to click add new app. So now that we're in our app, uh, we can go back to the wrap and see what it's looking for. So it wants the app center URL so it can target this uh, container. So we're gonna come up to the URL bar uh, and copy right up through um, our app name. So we don't need the uh, distribute or releases. We're just gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it into our app center URL and click save. So the last field we have to fill out for app center is the app center API token. Uh, to do that, we're gonna wanna go back to our app and under settings, you wanna scroll all the way down to add API tokens, click the edit button, uh, and over here to the right where it says new API token, we're gonna to click that. Um, it'll want a description, you can put whatever you want in here. I'm just gonna put Power Apps uh, Wrap, and we're gonna give it full access and click add new API token on the bottom here, and it'll give us our API token. So now we can copy this and make sure to put this in a safe place, because once we click close, it'll be gone forever. And we can go back to uh, Power Apps and paste it into this field and click Save. So that's all we need to do with App Center for now, but just keep that tab open uh, and we'll move back up to General. Um, so now we're going to go into Azure Active Directory to get the bundle ID and the Active Directory client ID. A couple things to note before we move on is that you do have to have an active Azure subscription on your account, uh, as well as one of the following three roles applied. So Application Administrator, Developer, or Cloud Application Administrator. So next we're gonna to go to Azure to fill in the remaining information, uh, but before we do that, we're gonna click save on our wrap project thus far, just so we don't lose anything. Uh, and then we'll open a new tab and go to portal.azure.com. I have mine bookmarked, um, but that'll be in the description below. So we're gonna to wanna to navigate to Active Directory. Uh, it might be on your homepage, or we can come over to the left and find Azure Active Directory in here. And we wanna scroll down until we find App Registrations. Otherwise, you can come up here to the left and click Add, and click App Registration. Uh, you can see a couple of mine already created uh, from previous tests, but up here on the left, we're gonna click new registration. Uh, and this will just be the display name of it. So we're just gonna call this wrap project. So under supported account types, uh, we don't wanna use single tenant. We do have to use the multi-tenant option as that's one that wrap supports currently. Um, and if you are doing an Android build and you do have to do that custom kind of redirect URI with the signature hash, um, you don't wanna build that in right here. We wanna register it first and then go in and add that after. So for now, it looks like we're all good on this side. So we're gonna click register. 
So now that we've registered our application in Azure, we can pop back into Power Apps and see what fields we need to fill out yet. Uh, we need to fill out the Active Directory client ID and the bundle ID. So first we'll do the client ID. We can head back into Azure and under Essentials here, we can see the application ID or the client ID. And all we need to do is copy that and go back to uh, Power Apps and paste that in here and click Save. Um, and once that's finished, we will go back into Azure all right, so now we're gonna go configure our bundle ID as well as our redirect URI. And this is a really important step because it's going to give our app a unique identifier through the bundle ID, as well as allow our users to sign on and authenticate. So to do this, we're gonna to want to go to authentication on the left and click that. And again, make sure that under supported account types, we still have multi-tenant. Uh, and we're gonna to wanna to click add a platform. So again, if you're on iOS, you're gonna click iOS and Mac OS. If you're on Android, you click Android. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and click iOS and it's gonna want the bundle ID. What I'm gonna do for mine is just say project, and we'll click configure. And based on the bundle ID, it's gonna automatically configure the redirect URI for us on iOS. For those of you on Android, if we click add a platform and click Android, it's gonna want a package name which is specific to Android. Um, so you'd give it your package name and this again is where you generate that signature hash and you'd paste that here um, and then add that into the extra field in wrap. So now that we have this configured, make sure you copy the bundle ID. We are actually gonna go back to our wrap project now and paste our bundle ID and click save. All right, so our next step needs a little bit of explaining. Uh, I actually had to come back and add this in after uh, most of the video was done. So the step after this, I use PowerShell via Azure Cloud Shell, um, but that is not sufficient for this step. So if you are on Mac, you are gonna need access to Windows. Uh, and what I've done here is just downloaded the free trial of Parallels uh, Virtual Machine, and I'm using PowerShell uh, that way. So just something to really keep in mind uh, if you are just a Mac only user. And the reason for that is in this step, we need to use the Power Platform for Admins um, PowerShell modules. And I believe at the time of this video, these modules only work for version 5.1 and below of PowerShell, as these versions are built on the .NET framework. PowerShell for Mac is built on version 7, which is .NET Core, so it's incompatible on Mac, meaning that you do have to get that Windows PowerShell access and run it as administrator. With that being said, another thing to keep in mind for this step is you do need to have someone, either yourself or someone in your organization that does have global tenant admin privileges, to execute this PowerShell command. All right, so first what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that we're running version five or below with PowerShell. And again, all these commands are gonna be in the description below, so you don't need to type them out manually uh, from watching the screen. So the first command is just PowerShell version table.ps version, and we're gonna run that and see that we are running on 5.1, so we can install the um, Power Platform for Admins modules. All right, next thing we have to do is check our execution policy, because uh, it could be set to restricted, uh, but we need to make sure that it's remote signed. So we're going to run the command git execution policy and see what we get. So mine says remote signed, uh, so we're good to go. But if yours says restricted, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So you're gonna run this next command, set execution policy, execution policy, remote signed, and we'll just click enter. And you'll click uh, A to answer yes to all. Make sure you wanna change it. We'll say yes, so it's changed again. So that should mean you're good to go. So the first command we're gonna to wanna to install is this command, the install module, microsoft.powerapps.administration.powershell, and we'll click enter. All right, so after a few seconds, this pops up. Um, it's just letting you know that this is from an untrusted repository. Uh, we're gonna click A as in yes to all. And then I get a notification letting me know that it's already installed. Next, we're gonna run the same command with dash allow cobbler on the end of it and click enter. And again, you'll probably get another pop-up letting you know you gotta press Y, A, no, um, but since this is already installed on my end, I don't need to worry about that. So now you should have everything ready to run this next piece. We do need to add our account um, before we run the command that we need to allow this app in our environment. So we're gonna start off by running the add Power Apps account and click enter. And we can see we get a Windows pop-up to add an account. Mine already shows up here, but you might have to type in your credentials, uh, but I'm just gonna click this and it should go away. And now we're ready. So finally, we're at the command we need to run. I'm gonna paste it here. It is admin, allow third-party apps, and then dash application ID. And then you're just going to copy and paste the Azure uh, client ID or application ID that we used previously um, to put in the uh, wrap step. And it's also on the overview page of your app registration. So what we're gonna do now with that is click enter. And this is all you're gonna get. So, you know, we have status code 200, which is successful, and we can see the description is okay. So everything went well, um, and now we can move on to the next step. There's still one last thing we have to do, and that would be to configure the API permissions in Azure. So we're gonna go back to our app in Azure and go to API permissions. 
from here we want to click add permission and there's three permissions that we're going after uh, the first one is dynamic CRM so that'll show up under Microsoft API's uh, and we'll give that access below and click add permissions so the second one we're going to want to add is going to be under API's my organization uses and we're going to type in power apps and it's this power app service one uh, so we'll add that as well so the last one we have to add is called Azure API Connections. Uh, so if we go to add permission, it's not under Microsoft APIs, it would be under APIs my organization uses. So we can search Azure, uh, and you'll notice that it doesn't pop up here. So there is a solution for that. Uh, so if we pop over to the Microsoft documentation for RAP, and if we scroll down to the API section, you'll see that there's a chance that Azure API Connections and Power App Service might not show up as options for you. Uh, but the good news is, is you can run a PowerShell command to get those in your app uh, manually. Uh, so we're going to demonstrate that here with the Azure API connections. So if you're on Windows, you can open up PowerShell to follow along or complete this. Um, otherwise, if you're on MacBook, you can use PowerShell for Mac. But I think there might be some extra uh, Azure modules you need to install in order for this to work. Uh, so for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use Azure Cloud Shell. Um, expand this a little bit and what we first want to do is go back to the documentation which again is in the description and copy this first piece here <clears throat> and we'll go back to our terminal and paste that in so we want to delete the your tenant ID part and replace it with our tenant ID so to find this we want to go to Azure Active Directory and we can copy our tenant ID from here and paste it here and run that so now what we want to do is copy the second piece uh, for the Azure API connections and we want to paste that here and click enter So you'll notice mine errors out, but that's because mine is already installed via PowerShell So once you have that done you can close out uh, and if we go back down to our app registrations and we go into our wrap project And if we go to API permissions again uh, and click add permission and now if we go under APIs my organization uses and we type in Azure we can see that Azure API Connections now shows up uh, and we can give it access. So just to recap, we filled out this entire form here. Uh, I'm gonna leave the icons as is and I'm also gonna leave the splash screen and welcome screen uh, as well as the default colors. Um, but yeah, so I think we're ready to build. So I'm gonna click save again just to be sure. So now we're gonna go ahead and click the build button and it's gonna say, hey, this might take a while. Uh, do you wish to continue? And we're gonna say build. All right, awesome. So it looks like our build is in progress. Uh, when it's complete, it should show up in our uh, app center here. Uh, but I believe the first time I did this, it took a little over an hour to do. So we'll see how long this one takes and we'll catch you once it uh, completes. All right, so we're back. Uh, we can see that our build was successful. Uh, it took a little over an hour and 15 minutes, um, but now we can actually close out of wrap and go check it out in app center. So now in app center, we can see that we have a new zip file created and this is actually our wrap project. So we can't do anything with this file yet. We do have to continue on to the code signing process for iOS, which I'll be making a separate video about and linking it in this video. Uh, and then we can actually open up our app and test around with it. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, again, I'm very excited to see where this feature goes. Uh, I'm very excited to start using this in the day-to-day -day apps that I create. Uh, so I hope you found some value in the video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and we'll catch you in the next video.